What's up guys? Welcome to day two of the Challenger League of the World Championship Series of America. Of course, last week we wrapped up the round of 32 of the Premier League. The round of 16 is going to be happening live here in studio next week again, 6 p.m. Eastern, each and every day. Currently we're in match number one. It's DeMuslim versus Maker. DeMuslim taking game one pretty convincingly with a very uh, not-so-standard build, I guess, is the best way to describe it. I have never seen that build in TVT yet. <laughs> I mean, I, I've actually seen some stim all ins, but never right. this this weird thing where you you go reactor barracks, single barracks, mass reaper. After eight reapers, you transition to a one base medevac stim all in. Uh, I mean, I, that's that's almost like a TVP build. Actually, kind of feels like it um, more than a TVT. But the muscle made it work, and I really feel uh, his his going into the stim medevac all in. That was a reaction to seeing his opponent open Reaper. If his opponent had an earlier factory, yes. he wouldn't have done it. Because like if he has a tank out there. Yeah, I, I think he knew that normally when people both go Reapers, they go expansion. He said, okay, if he's going to Reaper, then expansion. He'll just have basic bio units with no support. And if I have bio units with medevac support, I'll just kill him. Very interesting Pretty. point. Well, let's see what happens here. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting because if you're talking about, you know, StarCraft II, you know, generally the better player wants the game to go longer. And I feel like DeMuslim might be confident in his in his abilities here, yet he still goes for that one base play, which seems like a little bit of a risky play to me. Because again, if Maker scouts it, how different does that become? Very different. So, um, But it, it was a calculated risk, and it definitely worked out oh, well of there. Course, yeah. uh, of course, the man who, who got surprised by the Mass Marine Medevac one base combination here at the top right of Neo Planet S. We have Maker. And of course, his opponent at the bottom left. Up 1 to 0. The Muslim. Muslim, uh, one of the fan favorites here in the Challenger League, I would say. As a lot of individuals frequent his stream. So, uh, a lot of people, a lot of fans have been watching, of course, from Team Evil Geniuses is the Muslim Maker representing uh, Team Chaos Latin Gamers. Gas first for the Muslim. Hmm. Going to be looking to do a, a fast factory, most likely. So mixing up the build a little bit. Now the map is Neo Planet S, so it's it's one of the smaller maps in the map pool. So if you're talking about getting a medevac out or getting a banshee, it's not going to take too long for those units to get across the map, especially uh, with ignite uh, with igniting those afterburners. So not too unusual to see this type of play, or at least um, you know faster factory type play on this map. And of course, you know, Neo Planet S, one of the key features of this map is the two pathways leading to your opponent's side of the map and making sure you can control those places. And of course, the third base is pretty darn difficult to get on this map. So we'll have to see if these guys try to cater a strategy that's revolving around potentially denying a third base. But as we said before, Demuslim looking like he wants to get some fun stuff done here in the early game. We'll see him open with that factory very shortly. And this is a map I think Hellings are, are pretty good at because they can kind of go between uh, the two paths very easily. It's hard for your opponent to move out. And then even early on in the game, that the shorter distance, it doesn't play as big a role for Hellings to move so fast, but it's still nice. I mean, every few seconds you can cross the map and get there a little bit faster. It does play a difference. So uh, it's like people seem to have... Well, actually, it, he could be a, a Widowmine drop. Uh, that's another possibility. Yep. But I think it's going to be one of those two things. Either going for the Hellions uh, or the Widowmine drop. A second refinery. Wow. Uh, and knowing the Muslim style, I, I feel like we're going to see, most likely, Widowmine drop into Cloak Banshee. Uh, he, you know, he won last game with, with, the, with the one base style that worked very well. Uh, so he's going to probably stick with you know a similar late expansion, heavy early on aggression type build. All right, we see Reactor coming down from Mr. Maker, also getting that factory finished up for him. There's a starport from the Muslim. And, you know, people watching, if, you, if you're like, well, why aren't they going Reaper again? You know, what's going on? You know, they both made all those Reapers last game. Why not this game? You know, that, that has a lot to do with the map. Star Station is a Reaper map. That's what it is. People, you can ask anyone, that's what it is. There's so much space in the main base. Neo Planet S, not as much. There's only one little point you can actually jump into the main base, and then once you commit yourself to the natural, you can get yourself cut off pretty easily. So it's much more difficult to make Reapers work. And again, it, when talking about that fast rush distance, uh, the short map, 
more likely to go for the Stargate, uh, the Starport play. It's easier to make that work. We see the Tech Lab being switched onto the Starport, and it looks Straight like... Straight for Cloak. Yep, there's the Cloak upgrade for the Muscle. Not even going to mess around with any drop play before that. Nope. You know, both players are doing almost the exact same build. The one difference is Maker delayed Marine production for a bit to get that reactor earlier, which I think is, is going to pay him dividends further on as he's going to have a higher Marine count. Uh, the also difference is he's using his gas on a Raven. And not Cloak. Yeah, so... I, I kind of feel like Maker's build is, is a little bit more of a stable, conservative, defensive build. And, and the Muslim is going to be the guy trying to put on the pressure. Maker also has a tech lab on his factory. So uh, we could see this type of uh, push. I, I, uh, this is something Marine King used to do a lot. The danger is it, if you can defend the Banshees, then you often you can counter push. You have tanks, a higher Marine count, sure. and do a lot of damage. But it's tricky to both make sure you have enough defenses at home to deal with the harass and also have enough to actually get damage done on the attack uh, because, of course, you are delaying your expansion. I mean, the Raven is, is one of the, like, it's a perfect unit to have out for what the Muslim is doing, considering, uh, obviously, when the Banshee is cloaked, you want to be able to detect it. So the Raven will be able to be there to detect those and make the damage happen or actually, you know, appropriately defend against the Banshees. Also, Having the Raven can help with the Widow Mines as well. So if the Muslim ever decides to send those Widow Mines across the map, it looks like he wants to be defensive for now, not adding in a medevac to potentially follow up with the drop. Oh, gotta be careful. The Muslim using that cloak. The Banshee stops, though. Uh, oh, it takes some. Banshee. Oh, I think oh, the Banshee's dead. Yeah. yeah, the Banshee's dead as long as Maker micros correctly. Um, he actually, oh. he didn't uh, slaughter step the Viking, so the Banshee is going to get away. Uh, but it's, it's hurt. It, it, it's, it's yeah. in pain. It's limping away. It's, it's, its goal is to kill workers, and it hasn't accomplished its goal yet. So, you know, Maker's going to be happy so far. He knows exactly what his opponent is doing. He knows exactly what his opponent has. And he prevented the Banshee from doing any damage whatsoever. He did, but uh, he also is behind on the command center timing because he got these tanks out before expansion, which is something that usually means you want to put on a lot of pressure. He hasn't yet felt confident enough to move out and put on that pressure. And, and the Muslim's going double command center. His, his first one's already turned into an orbital. So he's going to have the economic advantage, even though his Banshee didn't do any damage, as time goes on. Maker currently has a stronger army, but unless he uses it within the next few minutes, uh, that advantage is going to slip away. Maker oh, just, uh, he was out. just supply blocked for like 30 seconds, which actually really hurts, especially when you're trying yeah, to go for pushes like this. His third tank ideally would have been out and, and part of this push, but as he's moving out, this is what I was talking about, it can be hard to both get the damage you, you, you want to get done and also defend back at home. He does have the missile turret and he's building a Viking, so he's taking all the measures he needs to, to mitigate a potential Banshee counterattack by the Muslim. All right, we have Banshees lurking uh, at the natural expansion in the main base of Maker. Maker pushing across the map here uh, with a pretty ferocious army. And now the Banshee's going to start getting damaged, and the turret is out of range right now. It can, it can see the Banshee. Oh, a big Widow Mine hit at the front there. Takes out an important piece in Maker's army. Maker using a Seeker missile, but that's not going to one-shot the Siege tank. Oh, it is. Oh, I missed an old Seeker missile. <laughs> it is going to take that out very quickly. And, and without that siege tank, the Muslim's defense is just collapsing. All right, Maker getting a nice foothold here at the natural expansion of the Muslim. Two tanks there, getting uh, shelling away to supply depot at the top. SCVs are trapped, Marines trying to track those guys down. A tank from above, though, here from the Muslim is going to be a saving grace. Hard to push forward against that, but Maker getting a lot of damage done here. He is. Uh, he deflected the Banshee harass very well. And the thing is, is yes, the Muslim. Oh, he has no Viking with his attack though. I, I think he actually brought one, and it was the unit that died to that Widow Mine at the front of the base. And imagine if he had a Viking right now. He could contain the Muslim until the Muslim basically gets his own air control, which actually would be right now because there's two Vikings. But uh, the Muslim being able to push back this contain is, is, is extremely important for him. Banshee taking out that tank there at the front door. Nice pick off there. And Maker's going to have to back away. Meanwhile, his expansion has been landed on the ground here. Harvesters is 38 to 30 in favor of the Muslim. And workers killed is 7 to 1 in favor of the Muslim as well. The you know, Muslim has a supply lead here, 73 to 62. He does, he does. I mean, he adds better economy from the faster third orbital and a few kills with the Banshee. And it was ideally compensated from Maker's point of view by delaying the natural for quite a long time with a contain. But unfortunately, you know, he, he lost the air control. The Muslim, of course, using the Banshee tank combination, was able to push that contain back. Maker's Marines could not fight the Banshee because the Muslim had a tank there covering it. 
So as these guys approach two bases, the obvious uh, next step is going to be getting that third base. On Neil Planet S, it's 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 pretty interesting to see how these players end up doing. Do they take the one at the top, or at least um, that's not in a straight line with the rest of their bases, or, or or do they take that one that's just across the the cliff from their natural expansion? And you know how do they try to prevent their opponent from getting that third as well? There are places you can set up your tank to really try to isolate that location, prevent reinforcements from coming forward, and really get that damage done. We have a Banshee and two Vikings coming across the right-hand side of the map. Of course, it's nice having the two Vikings there because generally your opponent is going to have one Viking looking out for those Banshees. And if you have two Vikings, obviously two is better than one. So you're generally going to be able to come out on top there. Point oh. defense drone going down here from uh, Yeah, from Maker. I'm really surprised he put that down because it's just 100 energy. The Muslim's going to walk away. And he didn't need it, right? If he pulled his units back, the Muslim couldn't have killed them because of the, the Marines there. So interesting choice to, to use that in, in that location and that's really a very important part of his attack i mean maybe not the point defense drone it could be a seeker missile but uh raven energy is so important uh in, in these small scale battles and well, in fact it's important in any battles it's a very powerful unit but maker now trying some two-pronged aggression and this could be amazing if he can distract the muslim and get an amazing drop in but if the drop does damage but his whole frontal force dies to a pack of stim marines because there's no support for it th it could really backfire all right, we see Maker setting up just outside his opponent's natural expansion. The Muslim has no idea that this army is there, and also the drop heading into the natural expansion. However, the turret's getting a lot of damage done, igniting the afterburner, trying to get those fanatics out of there and get a sprint into the main base, and this could do a lot of damage. Oh, man, that drop could not have been closer there. Just barely, barely those medevacs get past. But now there's 16 Marines in the main. The Muslim, he can't even get back to his main because of the siege tank outside of his natural. Wow, great positioning here from Maker, trying to prevent those reinforcements from coming forward. Meanwhile, the drop in the main is uh, taking down a lot of workers and now looking like he wants to target down some supply depots, maybe some add-ons. The Muslim scurrying back as fast as possible to try to deal with this. Has a cloak Banshee above, and he should be able to clean it up, but the Muslim still has that supply advantage, 108 to 88. So, you know, not the worst situation. The third base has been mining for quite a while, while the third base from Maker doesn't even necessarily exist. I mean, really, I mean, that was a great move by Maker. The, the, the Raven Auto turrets getting some kills as well as just being cost efficient with that engagement. The problem is, is cost efficient isn't enough when you're as behind as Maker yeah. is, right? I mean, the third's been up for a while for the Muslim. The Muslim's upgrades were 1-1 one, one, uh, when Maker was actually only had the attack during those battles. So that helped compensate for the positional disadvantage as well. And uh, just the macro is all going into Muslim's favor right now. I really like the idea behind that multi-pronged harassment from Maker. Sending the drop from the bottom right-hand side into the main base while setting up his main army, all those siege tanks, outside the natural expansion. Because I think he knew his opponent's army was across the map. He knew that, that if he applied some pressure to the main, his opponent would try to retreat to deal with it. And he knew to position his tanks in such a way to try to make that a lot more difficult for the Muslim. But the Muslim just able to skirt by the edge of those tank shots and get into the main to reinforce. But I, I really like the idea behind Maker's play there. Great plans by Maker, but he's still behind because of that later third base. He's now setting it up. The Muslim tried to push in there, but Maker defends very well with a nice tank line. Yeah. And you know, yes, Maker's behind. But as long as he always picks the battles when they're even in upgrades. Like right now, they're even. 30 seconds from now, the Muslim will be 2-2 two -two and he'll be ahead. And then Maker will have another 30 seconds before he catches up. Uh, so as long as he always picks the battles when he's not behind in upgrades, and he makes sure his positioning is solid, he can definitely make a comeback. TVT tank lines are so hard to break, uh, and, and, yes. and, and potentially drop play can be a, a great way to both throw away a lead if, you, if your drop gets massacred, or to make a comeback if you get a lot of damage done with that drop. Exactly, and we see the Muslim well aware of that fact, placing that sensor tower at that... Uh yeah, pretty common location at the third base, and Maker doing the exact same thing on the other side of the map. So these guys being really cautious, trying to uh, identify exactly where their opponent is, making sure their corners are covered, their backs are covered uh, against those drops, which again can bring the other player back into the game if they are behind. But we see a little bit of an interesting uh, movement of troops here. The Muslim sending his army to the top side of the map, Maker sending his army to the bottom side of the map, and they're both very aware of this fact. We could see a base trade type scenario here. Oh man, this is a tricky situation. Maker, I don't think he has any chance of defending the Muslim. Uh, he's trying to hold an open ground, but the two sea chinks he has defending are getting absolutely massacred. Uh, if he can, it's all about establishing 
your main base, defending your production line. If you can defend your production line, that's actually more important than your economy in this crazy TVT base race. All right, we have uh, the Muslim attacking into the third base of his opponent. Maker going straight for the natural expansion, a little bit closer to that production. And I, it's, it's hard to say he's going to come out on top here, Maker. has so many tanks in his opponent's main. And Maker, I think he might be okay losing a third as long as he kills his opponent's main. Two very important things just happened that are making this comeback have a potential for Maker. One, the Muslims had tanks in his main base. He could have defended. He actually just moved command them into Maker's army. And then two, the Muslim tried to drop the Camp Maker's production, but Maker had enough Marines in his siege tank back. He's actually defended his main. And, and yes, he doesn't have an insane income, right? He's down to one base, but he can still spend his money to build more units. The Muslim cannot do that, as his main is forfeit. Yeah, Maker going straight for the throat of the Muslim, going straight for that main base. Meanwhile, the Muslim going for his opponent's third base. Yeah, it's a great point. And now Maker is able to continually reinforce here at his main base, while the Muslim, oh, what can he do from here? The Muslim has to defend his mining base. If he can rebuild his production and defend that mining base, he's going to win in the long run because, yes, Maker can defend his main base, but there's almost no minerals left there. Uh, so he can produce until he runs out of minerals, then he's stuck. That's why we see Maker with a supply lead. The Muslim, though, with a lot of money in the bank, he just can't spend it because he lost all his depots, yeah. he lost all his barracks, and all his factories. No production. How do you make stuff if you don't have production? Uh, and uh, does he has two barracks floating in the air, and that's all he really has. And Maker going straight for that third base. The Muslim trying to hurry back home to deal with that. But I think Maker is in a great position, handling this game oh so well after falling behind, charging into his opponent's last remaining base. There's a bunker there. There's a tank, but that's not going to be enough. The Muslim's going to try to lift some units to defend against this push. But I think uh, you know Maker has. I think infrastructure over, behind this. Yeah, but I think he Maker overextended his army. He lost all his Marines, which allowed the Muslim to do that drop on a tank. Yep. Uh, he was a little bit hurried there. I, I don't. Th I think he could have slow pushed with tanks and hit a third. The Muslim's main force has already cut off. Uh, but instead, now the Muslim has. Uh, he lost a lot of SCVs, but the orbital still survived. Uh, he still has mules. He still has minerals to mine from. Of course, Maker on the other hand, he needs to retake his natural to get his economy going. He has better production. But his supply lead isn't what it used to be because he, he lost all his tanks there very inefficiently because of the Marine Chop. Uh, so it could go either way now. Yeah. Uh, four tanks to three in favor of Maker. 33 Marines to 26. Uh, so, you know, if we're looking at armies purely, Maker does have the stronger army. But it's all about positioning. The Muslim needs to make sure not to get caught off guard by this incoming army. And he needs to get that production back up oh. and running. Three barracks in production right now. A scan by Maker. He wants engagement oh. now. The Muslim's Marines are stuck and all pumped up. Stimming forward is Maker trying to spread out those Marines. The tanks don't do as much damage as they could. Maker charging into the Muslim's last remaining base once again. And now the Muslim running out of units, running out of time. There's the GG. Maker wow. takes game two. What a crazy game there on Neo Planet S. That was insane. <laughs> you know, honestly, it could have gone either way until the last five seconds. If, if the Muslim could have defended that third base, he had better income and yeah. he had five barracks just finishing up. So he could have, he had a lot of money in the bank, he could have spent it all, you know, 10, 15, 20 more Marines uh, a minute from now, and it would have been very different. But uh, just Maker able to destroy the Muslim's main, able to, able to defend his own, really is, is, is what led to that comeback. Yeah, um, you know, one player going after the third, other player going after the main base. And once you lose your production, once you lose that, that defender's advantage as far as, you know, you have the high ground at your main. You have your production there. You can rally out tanks, siege them up right away, right when they pop out of your factories. It's going to be very hard to engage that as the Muslim, even though he might have more units at that point in time at that location. Whereas Maker, he didn't let the Muslim have the time to prepare against that, that counterattack, which is why he won that base trade and uh, ended up uh, going out for the win. But uh, a very close game there. I feel like it could have gone either way, and we're tied. One to one here. This is WCS America Day 2. Guys, stay tuned. The Muslim versus Maker, Game 3, coming up.